So this time we're going to be making um, an AI that moves between patrol points. Now we're going to try and keep this simple and not get overly complicated with it, but hopefully it should work quite nicely and it will be a sort of pseudo random moving between as many points as you want it to. So before we start, I just want to sort of go over and say I'm using um, Kenny's free assets for this. So if you go to the Kenny website, you can download He's got um, some meshes, they've got a couple of uh, a running, an idle, and it'll be in the for what we're doing. He's also got a, a more premium version, I think, for £10, should you be interested, 10 US dollars. Um, so I'm going to be using that for this. So I've just already got those downloaded and implemented in here. So what we're going to do for this is we're going to start by creating a new blueprint class of a type character and I'm going to call this um, AI underscore BP and let's open that up and inside here inside our mesh component we want to bring in the character one that it's got purple um, it's got purple in this one if we could see both at the same time so he's got a purple background there. So let's bring that one in. Um, I brought in the texture as well, which if you just right click and say create material, uh, it'll create you a material for that. So I'll bring that into. There we go. Now we've got a zombie. And is a bit big by comparison to the scene. So I'm just going to scale him down a bit. So I'll just put my padlock on and say to, I don't know, about 0.4, why not? And make sure it fits better in my capsule. Well, 0.4 was a good guess. So it fits nicely in my capsule at the moment. Um, I'm just going to quickly set up the animations as well. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to go animation blueprint. There it is, and select the appropriate of this, which is character medium, and simple AI anim BP. Now I'm just going to keep this super simple because animation blueprints can be quite um, detailed, and. Here, I'll just, let's bring in my running. Let's bring in running. So where's running? There it is. So I'm just going to drag that in, drop it in, hit compile, and you should start running. Perfect. For now, that's pretty much all I'm going to do. That would, Like I said, we're not, in this video, we're not trying to do anything complicated. We're just keeping it simple. So in mesh, I'm going to switch my animation blueprint to simple anim blueprint. And we can see he's now running. Okay, so anything else we want to do at this point? I think that's about good for sort of the initial setup. Right, the next thing we'll do is go into our event graph and start setting this thing up. So we're going to be just for now working with the event tick. And in our event tick, this is where we're going to want to set up our actual movement. So um, what we'll do is we'll get our character movement and we will add input, add an input pawn vector. And we're going to be using a system where the AI moves from point to point. So the way we do this might be um, a little bit more complicated because we're going to be setting up an array. So let's create us off an array. And this array we'll call it patrol points. And just hit compile on that. And we need to set our thing to target points. Now to tell it it's an array, um, let's again let's just hit compile. And in here, press that little, little tiny button there and change it to all dots, and then it becomes an array. And we are going to get this, and we'll tell it it's got four points as well. So we'll just dance between four points at the moment 
you can have as, as many as you want really and I'm not actually going to set them in here I'm going to set them in the level so once we've got an array we want to get um, a copy from it so in this case if we got the first location from our patrol point so we're going to say patrol point one um, give me your information so good this is what we're going to be saying remember when we code in it starts in zero and we're going to want to tell it we want it the actor location so we're saying hey you what's the actor location because that's where i'm going to want to go and in theory that should walk us towards where we want to go um but because we don't want it to just go to point zero all the time we're going to want to create another variable and let's call this where to go where to go and what we'll also want is we want to get ourselves because we'll need to um, do a comparison we need to draw an imaginary line say for our points over here that we're walking to and our players here we need to create a vector that looks in this direction that points us in this direction so we're going to get ourselves as well and we're going to say yeah world um, well we just want location don't we so we've got two vectors here we've got vector a our player right in fact let's just look at this visually so we've got our player this is vector a and we're also going to want our target point and let's say it's here so we need to do a comparison and so sort of saying what is the difference to do this and what is the difference and to do this we just use a minus um, let's just put some more points down while we're here because we said we've got four points um while we're talking about that actually um no we'll come back to it in a minute in fact we'll no we'll address it now so where we've got a variable we need to turn this eyeball up open which means it's public which means we can edit it from outside the script and that means now when I compile and save it if I click on my character if I click on my character not the flow you can see here we've got our patrol points with no information so I can just click the little drop down and say and set these externally cool done okay now back in here, like I said, we're going to do a minus. So a vector minus a vector. And then we're going to want to get the, um, we're going to want to normalize it. And what um, a normalize does is basically if we've got a huge vector, it just makes it a, a more comprehensible number. It, it narrows it down. It lessens it to, um, what is it? To, it fits in a one by one vector so instead of if our vector length was say 600 um on the x and like 700 and the y it'd scale that down so it just fits in one vector chunk and it just gives us a more manageable number now because we're doing this on our event tick we want to have better control over this so we're going to um times this by a float and that float is going to be our event tick delta seconds. Essentially what that does is it gives us a much more controlled speed because event tick can vary depending on like the PC that's running it or um, how often this has been called and how much is going into the game. But by doing it by delta seconds, it gives us a much more consistent usage of this speed. Um, next, we're going to want to times this by our speed. So let's get ourselves another float and Again, we're going to want to promote this to a variable. And we'll call it AI speed. Which we'll just give, I don't know, a default value is a thousand for now. And see if that's too fast or too slow. And let's put you in there. And why are you up to our event tick and at the moment we're not setting our patrol points at any point but let's just it should just walk to point zero the first one which i think is that one it does as you can see it just walks to our player to our point and now what we could do is we just need to sort of set the 
control points up. Well, we could do this in a couple of ways. It's really up to you, depending on how you want to do this. And let's just say we want to, let's um, custom event by timer, oh, sorry, event by timer. Set event by timer. And of this, we'll create a custom event. Rando location. And every two seconds, we're just going to set this um, where to go value set to a random int. Well, a random flow, sorry. Random, oh, we, we are using it. Random int in range. And so between zero and three. And let's see if that works. Uh, probably, it, I think it picked that point a few times. But you know, it's quite random. It seems to just run between them. But uh, you can kind of predict the path a lot more. But I don't know, that's up to you if you wanted to deal, do anything with that. All right, let's say, for example, um, when it reaches a point, let's say we want it to chill. Let's build on this a little bit more. Um, so I'm just going to deactivate this for a minute because that's another way we could do things. All right, let's say um, we'll just do a branch, also known as an if statement. I just had an if there. Let's get your location. Because we're just using sort of the same values as before. And we're going to say um what shall we do equal to right if this vector is equal to this vector now we're here we have a tolerance so this is sort of saying how close do we actually need to be what's the sort of proximity on that so i'm just going to give it a nice wide range um i'll we'll just let's do a print string just to make sure that this works so what we want to say is when you get to a location the location that you're running to print zero print hello and it did and it's not going anywhere it stops and once we've got that um what we can do as well is let's switch up our animation play animation so you remember earlier um, we were looking at the different animations which you know we got Kenny's animations we've got an idle in here so let's switch to idle um, AI idle is that the right one no because that's the wrong that's the one and let's loop it and that should be pretty good that should be pretty good for that and let's just do a little delay so we can see he's gonna sit there and think for two seconds and then after his think he's done thinking let's set a new location so i'm just going to grab you control c come over here control v and he's going to think where does he want to go and at which point we need to set our running, set it back to running. So we need to set our animation um, mode. So we need to set our animation mode back to what it was. And I think that should do it. So it goes at this point. Chills there for a minute. And that's quite nice. And again, we've got this delay and there's no reason why we can't just use another um, random floating range. So 
So you can wait up to two seconds and you know, maybe somewhere between two and six. And that way it's going to make it seem a little bit more random. Um, we could even, what I would do is I'd open up my AI speed as well. So when I'm in game, if I feel like it's running too fast, I can set that AI speed down to about 600. And then see how it feels. Now, like I said, we've got four points, but really you could have as many points as you wanted. Um, there's no reason why you just couldn't put loads on and it'll just start between all of those. Is there anything else we could do to maybe improve this? Nah, I think that's probably all right. I mean, there might be particular points where you might want the player to wait. So do you see how it's like bouncing about? Let's create another a branch so I just held B and left click for that one and let's promote that to variable and call it weight which has got a default value of false so we'll say when you run if you are waiting do nothing but if you're true do that and let's get you and we will set weight to true so as soon as that happens, we're going to set weight to true. Then we're going to do all this, and we're going to set weight to false. See, now he's, he stops doing that weird bounce. Awesome. There you go. Um, that is patrolling. That is like getting your player to patrol between points. And then we've even got sort of a weight system set up. Cool. There you go. Hope you found that useful. Thanks.